Ahmedabad, India. The only way these women can make a living is by recycling. Every day, 30,000 women comb the streets and garbage dumps to scrape a living. A world away from billions of dollars promised by the G20 governments for green investment, there have always been recycling jobs. But in the so-called informal sector, they tend to be for the poorest people. You can be a green job on a rubbish dump where you are polluted by heavy metals because you have to collect rubbish without any protection, but you're actually part of the recycling economy. That is not a decent job, even though it is a green job. If we didn't exist, this city would be covered in rubbish. People don't appreciate our function. At least it's work, but of course we'd rather do something else. They don't consider us as part of society. We're banned from entering certain places. They call us thieves. There's no respect for us. Our work is not valued. What hope do the new green stimulus measures have for people like these? Green jobs have to be good jobs. You just can't leave it to the market. The market always looks for the cheapest solution. India is home to one of the largest wind turbine manufacturers in the world, employing 13,000 people. In New Delhi, the introduction of natural gas buses is expected to create 18,000 new jobs, a token perhaps in a country that has a labor force of over 500 million. In India, the Self-Employed Women's Association, SEWA, has brought together over a million women toiling in the informal sector and is already putting into practice each and every element of a sustainable economy without any help from the government. Poor are the most green because they have to innovate coping strategies day in and day out for their survival from whatever meager resources that are available within their own little surrounding. And therefore, I think they have the best of the strategies for green livelihoods. A few of SEWA's members have been able to find better work from recycled waste. Publishers of books and magazines and even some textile companies have been buying the products, an opportunity for slightly higher pay and better working conditions. SEWA is hoping to lead by example. In rural areas, some of the poorest in India, SEWA has introduced biogas stoves. The change has been dramatic. Before I had the biogas stove, we had to wake up every morning at 5 and go and collect firewood and not come back till 1 or 1.30 to make food. During that time, the children would go hungry and couldn't study, and I couldn't take care of them properly. The stoves use cow manure to create gas, allowing Canterben to save hours every day. She now uses the slurry from the biogas stove as an organic fertilizer. The compost fertilizer is very good for degraded land. Now we get 70 to 80 tons of cotton. Before we hardly got 20 tons per year. The lives of the uh, rural women workers very much depend on the environment for water, for fuel wood, for fodder. Environmental regeneration plays a very major role in our union, but it also leads to economic regeneration. Even in the most extreme conditions, the desert salt mines of northern Gujarat, the Sewa Women's Association is finding green solutions. For six months of the year, Ansuryo Ramishbai migrates from her village to join the thousands that work the salt mines in the Ran Desert, leaving her two eldest children in the care of relatives. Hi, Rami. Every season, the traders and the middlemen exploited us because they paid what they wanted and we had no way of knowing the price of salt in the city. But now we've doubled our money and secured better and more stable prices. The change was possible thanks to the introduction of solar panels, which Sewa members pay off in small instalments. Energy means that mobile phones can be charged and the miners can now stay in touch with their families and with the latest market prices. Now we are thinking that if we had solar energy for the water pumps we use in salt mining, then we could save a lot of money that we now spend on diesel. Sewa has taken up Ansuya's suggestion, hiring engineers to develop solar-powered water pumps used to bring the briny water to the surface.